Thank you all so much for coming out. It means so much to me and my family. To everyone watching at home, thank you. To my dear friends, Shauna Carroll, Alan and Taylor and Martin, and Raylene Kennedy, who all lost their children. And we all have the same thing in common. It was pleasure. We are dear friends. I hope you guys are watching. I love you all. My son Sean played hockey his whole life. It was his love and his passion. It was what he loved more than anything. To continue to play hockey, he had to get a vaccine. He was forced. He had no choice. So on August 25th in 2021, he went to his first Pfizer vaccine. On August 29th, he went to emergency with brown circles around his eyes and vomiting and a very bad rash. The doctor there didn't do any blood work whatsoever. He sent him home with just a pain reliever for his shoulder. 33 days after my son took his first vaccine, he was found dead on the floor beside his bed on the morning of September 27th. I had to wait three long months for an autopsy. They finally finished that autopsy. And the cause of death came back as unascertained. We're sorry, Mr. Herman, we don't know how you died. Fucking great bullshit. Only 2% of deaths have an autopsy that come back, cause of death unascertained. Only 2%. I knew something was up. I knew my boy was healthy. He didn't put salt on food. He didn't drink pop. He never had a drop of alcohol. He never had a cigarette. I knew something was wrong. I, I just knew it. So I started a Twitter page called Answers for Sean. Answers number four, Sean. And sure enough, we got those answers. We sent my son's tissue samples to America to Dr. Ryan Cole, who stained his tissue samples and found tremendous amount of spike protein in Sean's adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands control your blood pressure. Sean's blood pressure crashed, and he died. I was down to only two months left to file a claim, and a lawyer named Omar Sheikh reached out to me and said, call me. I called him, and now we have two lawsuits against Pfizer and the government of Canada. I am the only lawsuit in North America for a parent going after Pfizer and the government. The only one. I truly believe we can beat them. And with the support of so many good people, we can. Unfortunately, lawsuits cost 10 trillion fucking dollars. So, <laughs> if it was up to me, it would be 50 bucks, but as you all know, lawyers cost a fortune, but I have two lawyers who are very experienced in fighting the government. And then one day out of the blue, my lawyer called me and said, Dan, the government has given us an offer. And you know what? <laughs> Remember on Sesame Street, Lefty, the gangster with the long trench coat and the hat? Remember him? That's what they remind me of. It's like, hey, bud, who, me? Right. You wanna make a deal? A deal? Right. The government's deal was, if you're willing to drop the lawsuits, we won't come after you for court costs. <laughs> that's not an offer, that's an insult to my son and myself. They thought I would just go away. They thought I would back down. But I fear nothing now. I honestly don't. My boy was 
the most precious boy in the world. He never did anything wrong. And he was my reason for being on this earth. He was my reason for being here. Since I was 16, I always wanted kids. And Sean was as pure and innocent as they come. He was such a special boy. And I want to tell you about my favorite memory of Sean. Well, the funniest, anyway. Remember sitting spin? I wanted that one of them so bad, but my parents weren't very. They didn't have a lot of money, so I never fucking got one. <laughs> so I went to a garage sale and I saw one. I sit and spin and I'm like, I'm gonna get that for Sean. And I took it home. I was so proud, I was like, my boy's gonna go out and sit and spin. <laughs> and he sat down on it, and his legs were hanging off the end of it. And I'm like, and then I looked at the box and it says ages two to three. <laughs> Sean was five. So he sits down on the sit and spin. And he go, I go, give her, Sean, just fucking give her. And he spins it and only goes half a turn. And he looks up at me and he says, Can I be done now? I was laughing so hard I was crying. But yes, Sean, you can be done now. I'm sorry, your dad's an idiot. <laughs> It means the world to me that all of you are here. We are all good people who just want the truth and justice for Sean. Yeah. And for so many others who have been injured. You guys make the difference. You are. For everyone who's contributed to the losses, you're going to be part of history. Because we're going to win. I cannot even begin to heal until my son gets justice. I can't. I'm crying my eyes out there every day, and Sean can't rest in peace until there is justice. All I ever wanted from day one is for them to admit that the vaccine killed my son, but they would not do that. No, no. They, they just play games with me and delay us in the court battle. Send back notice to say, well, we don't understand 7, 7.1, and we have to send it back another. It's so time consuming, and it drives me nuts, but I'm not going to give up, and I know none of you will.
As they step behind a curtain to disrobe, have their private body examined, they have a legitimate belief that the doctor will not harm or embarrass them. They also have a belief that you, the doctor, will take their total health in consideration and never recommend a noxious agent that has even the smallest chance of harming them, especially if it is new and unproven. Agencies within government, silent doctors were speaking about the various obvious concerns that were there from the beginning of its usage. In fact, people who had access to the experimental data prior to it being given to millions and millions of people knew vigorously that the harm potential was huge. And within the first month, Pfizer admitted that there were 2,000 deceased people within the first month. When they had the swine flu, they stopped it after five deaths. Five deaths was enough for people to realize this is not something that we can trust. This is actually killing people. Well, when you have thousands dying, that's a pretty good sign that something bad is going to happen in the future. And so the whole world is my practice now because the whole world has been fed a lot. I can think why that the jabs have any safety at all. They have none. Or that they have any effectiveness against COVID. They have none. The Cleveland Clinic study in 2022, December, and that's now two and a half years ago, the Cleveland Clinic study proved that you were five times more likely to get COVID if you had five jabs than a non-vaccinated person. The more jabs you received in the clinic and you were a working professional, these were adults working as staff at a huge 50,000 staff hospital. And the four and five backs were off work all the time. They were in the ICU themselves. They were suffering COVID illness and other illnesses. And the unvaccinated staff, of which there were 8,000, those 8,000 people, they did well. They weren't having problems. They were able to see patients. They weren't taking COVID home to their own families. Why? Because they were healthy. Their immune system was not being damaged by the shot. And this is the one thing that Dr. Uh, McCullough and Paul Alexander and Mary Tyler, Mary Tyler Bowden out of the U.S., Dr. Corey out of the U.S., so many fabulous clinicians saw again and again and again that the more that you avoided the jabs, you were healthier, and they had another major fact to share with everybody. Either Mectin was the gold standard that you should have been using in the beginning. It's a beautiful medication. It's an antiviral as well as an antiparasitic. Viruses function in a way like parasites in that they're microparasites. They can only live in other living tissues. Bacteria can live on slime. They can live on wood. They can live on sorts of places. Viruses have to function in a parasitic fashion, fashion within people. And that's why this marvelous medication, which doesn't on the label have just one use, any medication is for the use that the patients and doctors find and realize is safe. And you have found and realized that safety, make sure you have it available to you in your own medicine cabinet, from your own sources, however you get it, because if the bad guys do release a disease X, if there is some kind of chicken borne virus or something or avian virus that comes our way, if that and vitamin D and vitamin C and the ivermectin and or hydroxychloroquine, they will be the things that will save your life. There will be no vax that's useful against disease X. They will claim that it's useful. It will be as useful as the COVID-19 vax was, which was non-useful, which once again, from the Cleveland Clinic study showed, you were sicker the more jabs you took. Sadly, other statistics are coming forward now. Terminal cancers, as they're called, which are rapidly moving cancers, which never have moved with such rapidity before, they are happening, sadly, in our vaccinated brothers and sisters. So I'm at the same risk that we're not separate anymore. Back, come back, what difference does it make? We're shedding on each other, but it's just around us in the world, and it's a bunch of crap that was all invented by Fauci, invented by Barrick in the States. They took it over to Wuhan to work on a supposed viral vector. And then when it came over, who do we put in charge of the COVID response? 
the son of a picture designed it and made it in the first place. His name is Anthony Fauci. He's the worst sinner on the friggin' planet. So ladies and gentlemen, and everyone out there in the world, please just trust us. I'm the same doctor who my patients were right in trusting that I would keep their secrets to myself. That I would not recommend medications that I didn't know thoroughly were safe for them. And in recommending ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, I'm recommending medicines that have been completely safe and are on the Canadian Health or Canada Health Formulary for all patients. They've been on Canada Health Formulary for people, not animals. They've been on the Canadian Health Formulary for 40 to 45 years. So I feel a lot better recommending a medicine that kills nobody. You overdose on Tylenol, you're dead if you take 10 times as much as you should for five days. You're dead. You take an unfortunate excess amount of hydroxychloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. You might get a little queasy in the tummy, but you won't die. And I'm in no sense recommending huge doses of these medicines. I'm recommending normal doses of these medicines. Medicines that have kept children from having scabies, but their parents can't use it to help themselves avoid death from COVID. And the pharmacies won't honor it because Health Canada and the College of Pharmacies and the colleges and physicians in the various provinces, they've all said, you can't get it. You can't have it. You can't be like a person in Pakistan. You can't be like a person in Mexico who can have this and safely get better and not die. And our morons don't care if we die. Our morons don't care to deny the public safe and effective medicines. The medicines are safe and effective. The vaccines have been the opposite. So my words are finished. I wish everybody the best. I love everyone. Thank you for coming to see me.
Concentrate away and she's trying to get a hit Hey, turn on the bus, don't get in There's one more kid I'm gonna go to school And I've got to bother the Get to be cool Keep on rocking in the free world. Yeah, yeah. Keep on rocking.